Just just read it. It's, it'll make sense. Okay. In this episode, we'll just be making conversations with James Skiffins, known as the model orifice. <laughs> you don't have to put that. That was just to make you laugh. You don't <laughs> you, have to. You just said read it. I, d- I did, but I, I don't want you. <laughs> it was just to make you chuckle. <laughs> Hello and welcome, or welcome back. I am Malcolm Childs. And I am James Giffins, and we are Just Making Conversation. Where we discuss the ups and downs of the model-making hobby that brings us sheer joy and utter despair in equal measures. From the olive green to the matte black and everything in between, we are going to be Just Making Conversation. Remember, there are other podcasts you can listen to. Plastic Model Mojo. The Scale Model Podcast. Plastic Posse Podcast. On the Bench. The Model Geeks. The Sprue Cutters Union. The Small Subjects. Built Sideways. Model by Garpone. The Micro Machines Podcast. Head to modelpodcast.com for all the links. If you have enjoyed or even misclicked this podcast, consider leaving a review or five stars as it promotes this podcast to more people to enjoy. Showing your support to us is as easy as making a cup of coffee. Why not go over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash JMC podcast and do just that. Your support will go towards making this content fit for human consumption. Like and subscribe. In this episode, we've just been making conversation with James Skiffins, me, known as the model officer, about his YouTube channel, his setup, how he does it, why he does it, who he does it for, where he does it, and what he does where. <laughs> I hope you followed that. <laughs> where, how, who, why, whom, what? We had a question about making YouTube videos and having the confidence to do so. So essentially, we want to encourage you to do so. The only way to learn is by doing and making mistakes. So we're going to talk to James and find out how to make mistakes. And I'm professional at that. Uh, We're also going to be talking to Chris McGee from IPMS Farnborough in the UK about their involvement in the Great Tarp Build and the planned table display at Scale Model World. Did we get any comments, messages, semaphore, communiques, do any smoke signals, carrier pigeons? I think there was a couple of pigeons. That's what <laughs> making all that noise in the background. So the whole reason for this particular podcast, one of the messages we had was one from Ray Davis. He says, good day, Malcolm and James. I hope you're both doing well. I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed listening to your interview with Ian and hearing all about his building of trucks and cars. I was actually listening to the episode while cleaning and detailing one of our company K200 Kenworth trucks. Anyway, take care of yourselves, and I look forward to downloading the next episode. Kind regards and respect. Ray from Sydney in Australia. Hmm. Good day. Good day. There is a, a message that was posted in the Buy Me A Coffee. <laughs> There's a backstory to this one, <laughs> isn't there? There is. In the end of the show, we always put on... Um, a list of the people that have bought us a coffee in the past. And if you don't put your name up, then we uh, don't read your name. More coffees were bought so that they could send us a message of complaint, which we read out in the last episode. And then we had a message from the guy giving us specific instructions to be able to read his name out. And I'll, I'll read you his message now. Regarding the May 29th episode and the mics, he says, I noticed that at the end of the broadcast, supporters were mentioned went like this, thanks to... Bill, Mike, George, Mike, Shelley, Jim, Mike, 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 Mike. I asked Mike Shelley why he got the name and the rest of you didn't. Therefore, I give you permission to use my full name. Cheers, Mike Beep (laughs) Stucker. So we can now use his full proper name, which we will do at the end of the show. Well, indeed. Thank you so much for the coffee and thank you for reaching out to us. But more importantly, thank you for the humour. It's made me and Malcolm chuckle quite a bit. Robert Worth said in his message on Facebook, he had a question. His question was, have you done an episode looking at making YouTube videos? And we both looked at each other and went, no. So, yeah, so that's what we thought we'd tackle in this episode. For you, Robert, special request. And we welcome that. So if any, anyone else has got an idea or thought or, or something that we'd, you'd like us to uncover from underneath the tarp, then uh, drop us a, a <laughs> message and uh, we're happy to do so. Not a problem. 
So tell me what you've been up to, what you're making, what you've been doing lately. Because I, I, I want an update on massive diorama you've been building. Yes, we were, we were asked if we would like to build some 172nd aircraft for our Welford mm-hmm. um, Museum uh, that they're putting a display t- together. I was asked to build a model, and I volunteered to do a glider, a horse glider, and a C-47. And then the young gentleman phoned me up and said, oh, can you make more? To which I nonchalantly said, yeah, don't worry about it. Stick it in a box, and uh, I'll make them. So six aircraft later, <laughs> they're all now complete uh, and been picked up by the young man. I'm glad to have some of my side back. Now, the reason I say some is because we were tasked with making them a little accurate in some degree, i.e. that the details were correct for that particular place. So uh, this, the airframe serial numbers are correct. Radio um, letters on, on, the, on the aircraft are correct, yep. as well as the, um, the squadron identification on the nose. So that, and we, we asked uh, uh, Mal, uh, a friend of ours, to make some masks up and did a fantastic job because he's just amazing. Mal from Miracle Masks. And because we did such a good job, it, it, the, the goalpost moved a little. Um, that being, two other modellers had, uh, from a local model club had made some C-47s but hadn't put the identification markings on there. So I volunteered to do that for them. And then the goalpost moved slightly a bit more. Um, we were initially going to recognise... <laughs> four squadrons um and um they asked if we could recognize eight squadrons Blimey. yeah more masks were sought the masks have been delivered everything's fantastic however uh, the old post moved just a little bit more what again in that there was just one more c47 to make oh, yeah, but, so uh, essentially if you want a free model done then just go and ask james it's, it's just say <laughs> yes no matter what it doesn't matter how busy he is this is the last one because I have I've learnt the word no, but yeah. So probably halfway through building the last C forty seven of this venture, and the other two that were built by some modellers are literally on on my desk there. One is sitting all quietly, and the other one's got its engines roaring and all that sort of stuff. Um, because one will be depicted as flying uh, and towing a glider. I think the aim is, um, but not my department. That's down to the diorama guys who are making that. So this being Thursday when we're recording this, these these I want these models done and dusted by the end of this weekend, which is going to be a bit of a task because uh, I've got a lot of work to do. But they will be done, um, and we'll put some pictures up uh, of all the beasts with their markings, etc. Yeah, pretty exciting job. Interesting in that I don't normally do things that detailed. Uh, I certainly don't do research very much, and we have managed to depict something quite unique in what will be displayed so yeah pretty exciting really pleased that pleased to be a part of it i know the other guys have, have done their models and and enjoyed the bills to a degree some have had a bit of um stress along the way and obviously we are only ple- too pleased to be involved uh, but yes no more no more i'll be in trouble if i take more on okay it's been nice doing um the d-day stuff actually during the birthday of the d-day it was very exciting what's your next thing you're going to be working on uh, the next thing I'll be working on is um, potentially a one forty eighth uh, Westland links from Airfix. That's on the that's on the on the the rack ready to go, and a few other projects that uh, are on the go. Uh, but I can't really talk about them at the moment. Okay, why did you mention it then? <laughs> right. Okay. So I've got the the Westland. I've got um, a quick build that we did. Uh, my, myself and Cole Smith were doing a, a video build with. We got halfway through them. And we've got to finish that. I've got obviously the hell hell diver. So yeah, there's lots of things. It just really depends on once I've got these done and out of the way. Obviously, because they're going to sit here for a little while well, until the gentleman picks them up. So I got to be careful on what I do next because I don't want to cause any issues with them. Uh, I see. You want to spray them with something? Yeah. I mean, I can hear in the background that my wife is basically saying to me, "No modelling gardening." So yeah, and that's not on the bench. So Maybe you should bring your uh, model bench outside. You can do both at once. Yeah, I haven't quite learned the art of making models and weeding with my toes <laughs> as I do so. Uh, but if I if I can get a a a seat stroke yeah. bench yeah. on wheels and learn the art of weeding while <laughs> model making, um, I, I could I could please everybody. 
you could make a small diorama of your garden and then you would get your modelling fix on as well as your gardening fix. There's far too many flowers in my garden. Oh, <laughs> you have to buy all the uh, foliage from Western Scenics, all the different colours and stuff. It would be interesting, don't we? Right, it would, because it would be, uh, there'd be an awful lot of scratch building going on. But um, no. There's a task for you. No, no, no. I'll, um, I'll put that on the, the list of, of inspiration for my wife to get her involved in model making. Maybe, maybe it could be another group build in the future, your garden or your yard, oh. you know? Oh, you know, you give me an idea for next year now. Uh, way in the future. Way, way in the future, yeah. We've got other things going on. We've got the tarp build going on. That's what we've got going on at the moment. We have got tarp build going on, yes. You guys that are listening, gather your pictures of tarps. Oh, well, people are. People are posting their own pictures, aren't they? They are. No, I, I saw a picture only today, actually, of a gentleman had posted up um, his three tarps. He owns three tarps, and uh, he was showing off his tarpage. He was. Yes, he was. Put a picture up myself of uh, some bales of hay covered in a tarp. I almost put a picture up the other day, but um, I, I couldn't take the picture as I was driving past. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Because I was avoiding the hedge that I was heading towards at the time. Have you finalised, decide on what you're going to build as your tarp entry? My tarp? Mm. I might throw a little tarp build in, in between me C47 and me, me Lynx. But didn't you say one of the gliders has a tarp on it? Uh, yes, so on the on the page, Facebook page, there is a picture of a horse with a tarp. Yes. Um, and I did try to put it on there, but I wasn't happy with it, and I took it off, and then I forgot all about it. So as the horse was leaving, with bits falling off it from where they were holding it, Another story, I'd forgotten the tarp. So, oh, no. Yeah, there was no tarpage on there. Tarpless. But, yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't, wasn't sure whether the museum would understand my humour um, and that. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a removable one, it'll be fine. But at the end of the day, what's the worst they can do? Say, I'm not going to get him to build anything anymore. Yeah, how they dare they do that for free? Yeah. <laughs> how much should we pay him? Nothing, sir. Oh, get what you pay for. I still don't like it. Send it back. <laughs> Send it back. Tell him to do it properly. Stop <laughs> mucking about. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I might do that, actually. That's a good idea. I might do a, a quick tarpy. Yeah, cool. Do, do so. you definitely got to enter enter the, your own group build this time. Right. I've got Centurion things still ready to go, so I'll be working on that after I've done my hand Solo. So I've got a huge hand Solo to do. I'm going to do a quick group build um, with one of our friends, Ron. He's got the Mandalorian, uh, the 16th scale Revel, and he's got uh, that built, and he wants to paint it. And I remember I had the Han Solo that was a garden ornament. Uh huh. It's massive, absolutely massive. He, he, he measures a good 20 inches tall, I'd say, and it's supposed to be in your garden. So I bought it and I thought, oh, no, I'll paint it up myself. But I hadn't got around to it. That was about three years ago now. So him and I are going to be doing that. That's what's uh, my next project. I'm very excited about. So that gives us the link to put a post up, guys, after you've listened to this episode, what you're working on. Let's see your builds. Oh, we always say, don't we? We do. Let us know what you are working on. So, Malcolm, I was I was out and about, and um, I discovered a tarp. So I, I went and investigated, and under the tarp, I found this person. <laughs> Hello. Chris, tell us who you are and where you're from. Uh, my name's Chris, and I work as a volunteer for Models for Heroes when I'm not enjoying retirement. What did you used to do before you retired? Uh, I was in the Royal Air Force as an air traffic controller. And are uh, you model making? I am. Tell me about IPMS Farnborough then. How long have you been with them? Oh, I went to IPMS Farnborough in um, April 1986. So I've been with them quite some time. So wow. They're a good club. They meet in the Farnborough Model Railway Club's premises, which has a bar. Very important. First mm -hmm. necessity on the list. And we're very sociable. We meet down the pub once a uh, a week as well. Uh, there's a theme there, isn't there? So, mm -hmm. uh, and we have lots of social events as well as going to shows. 
Yes, and then to talk about that, when you go to shows, Farnborough are quite notorious for disappearing off at lunchtime for a, a quick roast dinner or something, <laughs> and maybe a pint, and then coming back all happy and rosy-cheeked. Yes, and winning the best display trophy as well. Yes. Yeah, Tanglia, yeah. Yes, yeah. we did. And we did. we've won it at Salisbury and Abingdon. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's brilliant. Well, I didn't realise you were at Farnborough for so long, and um, yes. I haven't managed to get yourself kicked out yet. Well done. No, I did have 10 years of absence while I was uh, away with the Royal Air Force, but they kept my space open for when I came back. Tell us why you're on here then. Why are we talking to you today? Well, I was very intrigued with yours and James' idea of carpoolings. I thought it was a great idea and we should steal it to use for Farnborough's display this year at Telford. Mm. But I've mm-hmm. spoken to Rich Middleton and he's either going to put a table, the tarps to go on for James, or, which is my preferred option, put it next to Farnborough. Mm. So the two tarp displays can be together. That would be quite nice, I think. So that so there will be space available for people who have built their tarp builds to be able to put them on the table at Telford? Yes. With the tarp build, then, the idea is that anyone can build anything they like as long as it's got a tarp on it. The tarp doesn't have to be completely covering it, but it does have to be on it somewhere, either half on or rolled up or something. It could be a tarp on its own. Whatever you want. Anything. We've had some interesting discussions in the pub about tarps. Whether a tilt on the back of a lorry or a jeep is a tarp. Overwhelming decision was, no, it's not. Very controversial. A tarpaulin is a tarpaulin and should be treated as such. And obviously, the tarpaulin doesn't have to be over said item. It can be next to it, around it. And uh, yeah. most people at Farnborough are now getting on board, which is good. Yeah, That's that's great to hear. I mean, the, the whole idea of the build is to is to love the tarp. It's one of those things that's that's used to hide mistakes sometimes, or you know, and and just I don't know, just feel feel to me just feels taken for granted. So it's it's about a, a celebration of the tarp. Yeah, I, I'm not going to get in, into the politics of tilts and tarps, and that's easy for me to say. I, <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be able to say it that, that clearly in the pub either. But anyway, it's not tilt group build, is it? Tilp is the love child of a tarp, really. Okay. <laughs> so what? So what is the difference between the two then? Just so people, uh, just explain it to someone who doesn't know what the tilt is. The tilt is a custom-built item that fits over a frame on the back of a vehicle, and therefore it isn't irregular like the tarp is. Not tarpy enough for us at Farnborough. Okay. Mm. Okay, so a, a tarp would be like a, um, uh, a quick hash up, kind of chuck it on the top, quick to yes. cover up to keep it dry. Yes. And a, and a tilt is something that's made to measure, sewn, cut. And, oh, yeah, maybe. a tilt is a one use item, whereas mm. the tarp has many uses. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. So, yes. so yeah. what's the idea then? Do, you know, people can just place the. Um, model on the table? Do they have to book? Do they have to let anyone know first? Or is it just kind of, if you've got a tarp build, then bring it in? Yeah, I think James is quite happy with that, James, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. People brought a little label to explain who they are and what the Mm. model is. But maybe if someone puts a tarp over something, it might be quite nice not to put a label on it. So we can Mm. all have a bit of a scratch of heads and I guess, Mm. yeah. If someone wants to come and drop their model in um, and run away and leave it so that we don't know who it is, that they're more than happy with that. If they want to put a little label explaining the madness, then again, more than happy with that. It's um, it's just a way of bringing the whole community together to have a bit of fun, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it is a bit of fun. A bit of a giggle. It'll be interesting to see the founder top that Malcolm's making because apparently you came up with the idea at Duxford. And yes, it, yeah. It will be there as the sort of father top figure. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's, that, that's quite interesting you worded it that way because I, I've taken a lot of flack for coming up with this crazy idea, but realistically, it's, that's true. It was Malcolm's idea originally. He won't take responsibility for it, but um, <laughs> yeah, standing at Duxford for hours upon end, staring at a tarp. It's a little bit like how I found you, Chris, you, you know, doing your research. <laughs> <laughs> 
Was he researching? Was he on a clipboard going, oh, this is well, hot? I, I guess he was. I mean, why else would you be hiding in the tarp? I don't know. I, I did the buccaneer. Lots of people wandered for ages. What was underneath? Some some people. We've got an ex-buccaneer guy who got it straight away, but a few others were um, intrigued by the whole thing. Yes. So, uh, well, I, mean, I, well, I saw it. I don't know if you've seen it, James. Uh, Chris's tarp buccaneer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I have. Yeah. I thought it was the uh, Battlestar Galactica Viper when I first oh. saw it. <laughs> oh, well, you're giving me an idea now. You should have done that. I, I have to say, um, before I forget, really, more than anything else, how flattered I am, and I think Malcolm is, is the fact that an IPMS group has, have contacted us and asked us to um, adopt the idea. And the fact that the nationals are, are willing to put a table to one side to try and avoid them being in the competition area um, is, is, a, is a good idea. <laughs> 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 I would be happy to see one in there. Don't get me wrong. The fact that the society has embraced uh, such a crazy idea yet again um, <laughs> yeah. is is a testament to the society. And I want to say a big thank you to not only Farmer, but also the guys at organising Telford too. It re- I do, I genuinely mean that. It's, it is um, a massive um, pride moment that someone's been willing to adopt it. So, thank you for that. Um, I'm sure the the group, uh, Farmer Group, have had a debate or three or four over a few glasses of lemonade as to what they're willing to do or not do, etc. And um, I'm sure there's been some interesting conversations as well. Uh, sorry for ruining your evening and your lemonade, but um, what was the, the discussion? Tell us a bit more about that, because that's quite interesting. Well, toilet paper soaked in PVA glue was mm-hmm. a good idea. Then somebody came up with a Japanese lining paper. So we're going up market now. Uh, I think they've used it on the repair shop on pictures. Somebody else came up with the tissue paper you find in shoe boxes, again, soaked in PVA glue. Oh, okay. Uh, my chosen route and what I did with the Buccaneer was to take some uh, sticky back metal uh, tape and then put some painter's lining tape over the top of it to give texture and then pushed it down on the model until it was hold its shape, being metal. Mm-hmm. It held mm. it shape better, I felt. Mm. So, but um, no, people are going off in all sorts of directions with this. It, it'll be interesting to find out what the favourite runner is. I think the other the other spin off to this and and something which I'm really looking forward to is um, is the YouTube videos. You know, night shift will be on that like <laughs> like everything. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, and all our other favourite. I mean, I, I I didn't pick on night shift for any particular reason, but all of our favourite. YouTube uh, instructors and um, persuaders will be out there tarping, tarping away for months. The, the Facebook page is called The Great Tarp Build, and we'll put a link up uh, down in the descriptions. Find it. Go and join. Go and have a look. Go and see. And, and go and see what Chris has done. So tell us what you've already made then with your tarps and what your plans are. The Buccaneer is made, and I and use some old tyres. <laughs> and uh, some breeze blocks that I had laying around to hold it all down. My latest one is from the scrap pile, a phantom. It had already been started, so I've thrown the bits that started away. Uh, I've taken the wings off, and um, I'm going to put a tarp over the cockpit and then paint uh. the rest of it as I remember phantoms in my day, which was a two-tone, sorry, three-tone greys and green are you going to do all the eyelets and the the the, the tie downs and all that kind of stuff um because it's a smaller scale i might go for the um tire mm-hmm. so i have a very nice uh kefir oh. i lost the nose and the engine it's just crying out for a tarp really yeah mm. so, all that all that moisture can get in there couldn't it yeah yeah hey. so, um, <laughs> do you seem to remember seeing a, that aircraft abandoned which with um young trees growing around it and all sorts was it was that i'm sure it was no, that that was, was a mig it was the mig oh was okay yeah so it was a mig yeah 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 you're right the diorama experts can move in here you know they could come in with the tarp with the trees and bushes and all sorts of things really you know they, they love all that tree stuff don't they? absolutely yeah absolutely oh. that's what i'm planning on doing is, is is trying to recreate the 
the dry grass of Duxford when we were there uh, around the the tank that we saw with the tarp on it. That's, what, that's my plans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting as well to see how many tarps we can find in the competition. Whether they, uh, you know, may, maybe wanted to put their pictures into the tarp bill Facebook afterwards. That'd be interesting. Or maybe we should put some business cards around them saying, "Hey, have you thought about entering your tarp into the tarp bill?" <laughs> Tops wanted, used or unused. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's going to be really fun to see how people approach it and what they do. And it's <laughs> relatively simple. Like you said, Chris, you can just take a, a, a build that is perhaps stalled um, or you know something sat on the shelf. And if it's covered in tarp, there could be anything underneath there. You could just be anything at all. There could be nothing underneath there. And, and that's the key. At the end of the day, you could have something that's stalled that you're not willing to sacrifice under a tarp but you could put the tarp over it to get the right shape mm-hmm. and then just take the model away and surprise everybody that there's not actually anything underneath it. It's just the form of, of the aircraft. Mm, see? Yeah, the possibilities wasted. are limited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go very left field this year and what I'm going to do... This is what I know is James making a, a rod for his own back. No, this isn't a rod for my own back at all. It's a rod for someone else's. But I'm going to ask Dale from Airfix to be our judge of our tarps. Obviously, Dale will be listening to this as this you goes out, that. and it'll it'll be a surprise to him. But I know he'll do it because Dale's a wonderful guy, and what he says goes. We can't argue with him. There'll be a specially a handcrafted award like there was for the the uh, nut build. It's in the process of being designed. I can't really go into too much detail. <laughs> you don't know, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I am making gestures in this recording to everybody here going, oh, I don't know. But yeah, no, I will make something uh, because I think it's fun. Uh, not everybody will want a tarp award in their uh, medal cabinet, but you know, yeah. not everybody's going to have one of those. I mean, all these golds and silvers and all that nonsense. <laughs> you want a tarp award is what you want. <laughs> national or local shows around the world that all be saying oh my god we're missing out with this tarp wall we're gonna have to get on a plane and take our tarps to england and uh, more the merrier so if you can't make it in person then by all means contact us and post it to us we'll put it on the table for you there's a dark side to this as well yeah okay we did have some anti-tarpists in the farmer branch is is that because they want to show off the model underneath and they don't really care about the tarp? Because yeah. surely you could still have a little rolled up tarp on the back of something. Yes. And one of said anti-tarpists came up to me the other day and said he'd found a photograph of an aircraft he was building that had a tarp on it during the war. So, <laughs> so we are, Praise be. <laughs> yeah, we are converting those heathens to, to the tarp. I would be devastated to, to, to feel that there was unhappiness in the community because of my tarp idea. So if you don't want to, don't want to do it, that's fine. Not a problem. Embrace the fun and, and community of it. If you can't bring yourself to be a tarpist, then at least help with your random pictures of tarps. It also takes over your life, really. You see tarps at every turn. I've just used a, yeah. um, a wet wipe. It looks like a tarp. It does look like a tarp, yes. And funny enough, it does seem to have already moulded to your fingers, which is a little worrying, but anyway. A chewing shroud for a modeller. I'll I'll just test fit it on the Phantom. There we go. So if you are listening to this and you are a YouTuber influencer, I challenge you as well, because it would only be fair to do a video of how to make a tarp. And if you do do one, drop me a message and I will advertise the bejesus out of it for you. Because more people get involved, the more fun it will be. So, and so there you go. Come along to um, Scale Model World. Bring your top to build. Also, the the Facebook page. So go and join that as well. I partly have an apology in that my daily posts aren't going very well. So I I, I call out to all you tarpists out there. If you could, and you can get round to posting a picture of a tarp up, that would help me immensely. So. Um, hmm. I'm more than happy for you to do that. Or, or if you want to do it anonymously, uh, you can always send me a message with said picture and I'll put it up and won't mention your name. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you should share the tarp. I haven't put any pictures up until the Otania Museum and saw a little tiny tarp on top of a Wessex. And I was compelled, compelled, oh, to take a photograph and put it onto the, the Facebook page. 
it was brilliant that I saw the tarp because uh, it was right on the very, very top, just covering the rotor housing. <laughs> you could hardly see it, but it was, uh, was there. Not like a little, little hat. It, Chris is absolutely right. Not only are you picking up items that you don't normally associate with making of tarps and thinking, now that might work, but also when you, you see tarps everywhere, they do seem to be very visible at the moment because I certainly have almost crashed the car twice when I've seen tarps. and gone, oh, there's a tarp! <clears throat> so yes there, there is a safety warning there please if you are driving obey all the rules of driving and don't concentrate on the tarp please i think we're all tarped out now i'm looking forward to seeing all the models appearing on the table the trouble is our competition secretary doesn't really know where to put them they're, they're not a diorama they're not miscellaneous causing even more problems than we uh we foresee wait wait hang on hang on a minute i've just realized is this why they're so willing to give us a table? It's because they haven't got a category for it. See how unloved the tarp is? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come November, it will be loved by all. And, yes, uh, th- yes and it will have its, its highlight, its day, its moment, and then Dale will pick a winner. And so, yeah, with, with, the, with the table, how are we, what are we going to use as a tablecloth? I can't think of anything that we could use. Mm. No ideas? How about one of those um, tops? Oh, I was wondering actually whether we're going to cross a line here because if we use a tarp as a tablecloth, then isn't that on the realms of a tilt because it's for a Pacific framed item? No, 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 not, no, not no. custom built to go on the table, is it? So. Well, you, I might spend the money and get a custom tarp for a table, you never know, but that, that would, would make that, it a tilt. That would, no, don't no, no, we'll just oh. bungee rope it and make yeah. it as awful as possible. Malcolm, can you do me a favour? Just, just make a note. Uh, a couple of spare tyres and some concrete blocks, um, and we can we can tie it down that way. That'd be that'd be fine. <laughs> I'm sure that <laughs> health and safety have something to say about that. <laughs> Go part tyres and bricks. <laughs> what a display! It's not really a tarp display. It's more a case of it was it was in a skip, so I, I thought I'd recycle it. <laughs> yeah, ripped, dirty, and I have the tarp already for the table. It's fine. Does it have any dead snails under it? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Helps and adds to the tarpism. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris, for coming on. And uh, yeah. as James says, we do really appreciate it. Uh, it's nice that you're on board and having a bit of fun with it. This is yeah, a fun hobby. It is, and it's, it's something that we're not going to take too serious, but we are going to enjoy ourselves. Enjoy the journey. Just don't wring my neck at the end of the show. Um, that's all I have. <laughs> we, won't. we won't we won't right well do you want to go and put Chris back under that tarp or should we just let him go oh well, there are other tarps to look at so um, yeah I think we just open the drawer and release him <laughs> <laughs> cheers Chris thanks a lot bye now bye, bye now so the purpose of this show is to talk to you about YouTubes it is so Looking at what uh, Robert had said, Uh he said that he had done two very short videos and they were just snippets of the end of session build. Um, So obviously he'd kind of done like a review or a summary or something of something he'd already made. Mm. Um, And he was painting his head, it was. Yeah. What would you say to uh, Robert then? I have helped a couple of people over the years Mm. when they've, they've, said oh I, I want to do a youtube video i'm not sure how to do it what do you recommend yeah <laughs> it, it's difficult to recommend i can only really say what works for me yeah okay so <laughs> you'll go on my youtube channel and go we haven't put anything up for ages what's going on and you're right i haven't so i've tried a couple of fo- different formats so the the one that i found was successful was the one that involved planning <laughs> weird that <laughs> so that would be my my big church build that we've talking about loads of times um, over the years, and I thoroughly enjoyed it because it was something I was super passionate about. Uh, I wanted to bring the idea alive. Uh, it involved lots of scratch building. It lo- involved lots of elements of things that I loved to do. So I loved I loved doing the video, mm. um, and all I literally did at the time was I used a, a little camcorder, a JVC um hd camcorder you can pick them up for uh, i don't know probably about 60 70 pounds ish you know second hand it wasn't anything amazing um and i had a microphone which i forget which one it is but the one i use right now is a snowball 
Um, and then what I did is I, I would film what I was doing at that time. I've got a, an Apple computer and I'd put it through the software that, that has already installed on it and do a bit of editing and coggle to something together to make it look re look reasonable. The joy with the camcorder is that you can fix its, um, its focus and you get a little screen you can look at so you can see what you're doing sort of. Um, and hopefully um, the two, well, everything marries up and it, it works. So the mm. thing that I found difficult with the whole thing was that I do a bit, edit it, stick it in a, in a file ready to be published. And I learned very quickly that you don't publish what you just did. You build a little bit of a library up and then publish the first bit when you're like two, th two, two or three bits into it um, because you planned it, you see. Oh, uh, okay. The downside is, is life comes along and disturbs that plan and you potentially end up with a position where you're filming, editing and publishing all in one week, um, which is, is a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. It was a nightmare. And I... Mm. The only thing that got me through the whole thing was the sheer passion I had for the, for what I was doing. So would you recommend then that you someone film the entire thing and then edits it down? Now, if you're clever, then yes, that's exactly what I'd advise you to do. Um, and if you're starting out, uh, that's exactly what I'd advise you to do. Do a build, keep it under your hat, maybe have two builds going on at the same time so you can show what you're working on to people. And then when you've finished it, you can edit it all up, put it into episodes, how you feel you want to portray it start on the next project do it once a month if that's what you want to do whatever whatever your time span allows you be a bit in front of yourself because there's nothing worse oh i've got a deadline i've got i've got to get it out i've got to get out mm. and that is super super stressful yeah it's meant to be a hobby right yeah I, I experienced that twice throughout that series and i think there's 14 episodes in all something right. like that the second bit of advice i'd give is until you're fully comfortable with the process and if you've got memory on your camcorder or your computer or whatever you're using then film everything so what i actually do is i'd sit in a hangout making the model with the camcorder over my shoulder filming what i was doing the joy of that is that all you do is you drop that video file into your editing suite and just delete straight away any audio and then and then talk over it oh okay yeah you can script it if you want to um, and you can talk over what you're doing. Now, the upside to that um, that we've discovered, I've discovered just recently, um, which I haven't done, but you could do, if you're not comfortable with your voice, reading out a script or or trying to think of what you're going to say, what you could actually do is type it all into an AI program and get them to say it for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's a lot more clearer. You could have a bit of fun with it as well. You could disguise your identity by using a slightly different voice. <laughs> I mean, if you want to pay for it, um, there are the, there is the ability, I believe, for you to develop an AI, vo AI voice, which is your voice. Yes, yeah, I've seen that too. But yeah. I don't know how much that costs. It's not something I looked into. So it would be a lot of extra work, though, because you just have to type it all in and then line all the audio up to the video. And if you wanted to change something, you'd have to go back. It wouldn't be that difficult. It would be a bit time consuming, yes, but it wouldn't be that difficult because the the other way in which I well the way I did it off to start with is I would edit the video down to what what I thought was a reasonable amount of time and, and covered everything that I wanted to cover in that mm. episode. Delete the audio and then I would sit with a, pe a pen and paper and write out the story, if you like. Okay. Maybe pointers. Sometimes it was just pointers. Sometimes it was. Uh, you know, or you must say these these things because that's really important or whatever. And then I'd I'd go back into my editing suite, turn the microphone on and watch it and record it, the audio, as I'm watching it. So I'm basically talking through what it is I'm doing as I'm doing it. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So you're, you're voiceover, you're doing a voiceover live, essentially, recording that. Yeah, a live voiceover. So yeah. it, it, that, is, that is an easier process, I, I would say. And I use uh, uh, Apple iMovies. Um, and I can, you, you can do the basics of what you need to do within that quite easily. Then went on to using um, uh, a Logitech C190 camera, uh, web camera that was just pointed above my yeah. desk, uh, of which um, at that point I did a little bit of video in, but I also did lives as well using StreamYard. Uh -huh. um, and lives are 
quite fun. There is no editing because <laughs> it's live. <laughs> you can go back and edit it if you want yes, to. Yes. Um, but I, I never have. I've always just, well, that's what went out. You never out. Never had to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lazy. It's no more than that. I'm just lazy. If one person watched that, watched it live, whether it be one or however many, they saw what happened and what was said. So I don't feel it correct for me to then edit that out and take the fluff out effectively if you like unless you said something that you shouldn't have said you know nda wise i've seen that before if i actually said something i had an unguarded moment then yes yes but i, I luckily touch wood i haven't had an unguarded moment so planning is one thing you would say was important um do you think you need to go out and buy really good equipment like top end equipment spend lots of money on it if you're gonna if you're gonna earn a living from it, yes, very few people earn a living from it, to be honest, which is all part of the algorithms and all that sort of jazz. Um, and and part of the reason for that, regular content. If you're gonna go down that road, that's what you want to do. Then you need to plan a regular amount of content um, so that it feeds your audience on a regular basis because. We are very fickle. We will move on very quickly to something else if it's not grabbed our attention or it's not regular enough. Completely agree. Absolutely. I, I've uh, like when you and I have had breaks with the podcast, you know, a week off or something. Suddenly, mm. the the viewing numbers drops right off. Mm. And it's because people forget <laughs> forget yeah. it's there. You know, yeah. if you're worried about viewing numbers, that's an important thing to to mention. At the end of the day, the ultimate. Th- thing you need to decide before you do it is what is the what is the reason you want to do it mm-hmm. is it something in which you feel has not been covered has not been highlighted that you think is valuable that could be one reason could it be that you just want to show people what you're doing you know if you get 10 views in a month great if you get a hundred thousand it don't make any difference it's as good as 10 you don't care as we said in the intro Everybody wants to hear what you've got to say. So don't be scared about that. Whether we mean to or not, we all learn from everybody that we watch anyway. So if you're brave enough to do a build episode where you show every single bit you do, then people will learn from that. There'll always be someone that learns from it. Yeah. So don't be, don't be afraid by that. Don't underestimate either, potentially, the amount of work in which you're going to create for yourself. It will eat away at you to a point where it may affect your mojo or may affect your willingness to do models anyway. Yeah, yeah. You need to A, watch out for, but B, understand before you start down that road. But to, to start doing it, no. Uh, the, the simp- do you know what the simplest thing i found right now, easiest thing to do is to get yourself an iPhone. An iPhone will do everything you want it to do all in one piece of kit. And the quality is good. At times, I'll be honest, I think the quality of the iPhone that's hanging above my desk is better than my Logitech. And do, do you mean that's because it's got the camera on it and you can upload directly and it's got a microphone as well? No, what I mean is it's just a versatile bit of kit. You know, it is effectively a camcorder in your hand. Gotcha, right. To take on board that, you, you do need to think about lighting, you do need to think about all that sort of stuff as well. But realistically... You don't need an awful lot of stuff to make those things right. It will film in the dark and give you a reasonable picture. It won't be great, but it'd be you, you can understand what someone's doing in the dark if that's what you want to do. But that's a unique sell, actually. Modeling in the dark. <laughs> that's new. Yes, lighting is important if you if you want a really good picture. Yeah, I would say audio is really important too. I mean, throwing my bits in there. Uh, if something sounds bad, it's just so just dis- distracting. Um, so have a good think about how you what audio setup you have. Yeah. Saying that, I'm sitting here with my fan on, airplanes flying in the background, <laughs> a creaky chair. <laughs> You're right, and and microphones are important. I mean, yes, these the C190s have got microphones in, but I I don't like them very much. Me neither. The microphone quality is not great. I don't think the microphone in the iPhone can be quite good. There are plenty of videos out there on YouTube about starting uh, YouTube content and what would be the best equipment and all that sort of stuff. And and what I would say to you is is watch a few of them. Think Media is a really good source of information in that respect. Think Media. Do your research. And I'll I'll give you a reason for that. Is that I bought myself a fancy camera. 
um, a little while ago. It scared the bejesus out of me because it was a reasonable amount of money. I bought it, got it home, took it out of the box, went back to a video, was watching a video about it, and then it said, this doesn't work with Apple. Because <laughs> you're all set up for Apple, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all set up for Apple. Basically, the, there was a patch that was needed by uh, Canon. And then I also realised afterwards as well that um, it will only f- film up to yeah. up to 20 minutes at a time. So, yeah, do do your research. Don't make that mistake. The last thing to cover, really, uh, as the three main basic is lighting. So that may entail turning the auto off of your device to to be able to fiddle around with the settings to get that right so it looks nice. But lighting isn't isn't that expensive. What I have is I have daylight bulbs above my den- bench that in the ceiling. They give me more than adequate lighting for what I need to do. Only problem is because of the position of where they are, to have a camera over the bench leaves a shadow. And then that creates other issues. I was big and brave and bought myself some studio lights, which are great, absolutely great. I love them. But boy, does it get hot in here. And it's, for me, for my eyesight, it's a little bit too bright. Oh, what, what I've got is this one here. It's a Viltrox, and it's on an arm. But I can put it wherever I want. It's got a battery as well. It's got a can change the brightness and the temperature. It's got a Viltrox L116T. Not expensive, and is perfect for me i mean i don't do yep. much filming i do a lot of zoom stuff so all i need is like the the shot of the actual thing i'm working on yeah it doesn't it doesn't cost an awful lot i mean i've, I've just recently bought myself telescopic arms which you've got lights in yeah and they're, they're basically bench lights then well they're not even bench lights they're, they're more work lights than they are bench lights i mean you can go and get yourself a tubeless 100 and just nearly 200 pound now i think they are hobby bench light that goes over your desk, oh, right? And and they're lovely, but then you run into all sorts of problems with flickering and all sorts of stuff, depending on what the output is and how your camera reacts to it and all that sort of thing. So there's lots of things that may trip you up, but the basic spotlight that you can get in a in a hardware store would be more than ample with with a daylight bulb in it. As long as it's a daylight bulb, yeah, five thousand six hundred k something like that. Mm-hmm. That, that would be more than adequate for you. And at the end of the day, one thing I would say is don't go out and spend the fortune. If you want to do it, go and buy some stuff that's secondhand. Be careful what you buy, obviously, because you don't want to buy secondhand rubbish. But, you know, the, the, the little camcorder I bought, I bought over five years ago. And they were, I think, six years old when I bought one. What about, um, you know, your actual channel? Is there anything you would look out for or make sure you do? So I, if you're going to make a video, I would make them succinct. So you're, you're saying everything you want to say in the shortest amount of time while entertaining. Yeah, yeah. And I, the, the YouTubers, most YouTubers will tell you that when someone clicks on their video, if they haven't got that person's attention within under 20 seconds, they've lost that viewer. Uh, okay. But then you've also got to make sure there's something a little bit longer into it that is another hook. So you've got to keep trying to make sure you're pulling people because what happens is you get a lot of click, um, but that doesn't create a viewer because they'd be clicked on it and gone, oh, I'm watching that. Click off. Yeah. The worst for me, the worst thing that you can do is have a really long intro because you sit there for 30 seconds watching an intro of pictures of builds you've made and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I get turned off. Like, well. And I'm guilty for it too. You know, I've done it. So a little face to camera right at the beginning. It doesn't have to be face to camera. Face to camera is better because it's more personal. But a little face to camera saying, this is what you're going to see is always good, I think. Yeah, here is what we're coming up in this video. And then you can roll your opening credits and then kick it off. So you've got their interest. A quick, a quick, um, a quick credits. Um, is is always good, and I'm I'm as guilty as anybody for 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 not doing that, because my my credits can be a little bit longer. Because you sit there and you watch it, you edit it, you watch it, edit it, watch it, edit it, and you eventually come up with this format, and you think, oh, that's really good. That is. Problem is, you sat and watched it and made it mm-hmm. for the last four and a half hours, so you think it's good. So share it with other people, get their opinions. Eh? But my advice: save yourself some time and effort. Best thing to do is is get yourself a logo, 
that comes up and that's it. Don't do anything more than that. A couple of seconds. Yeah. That's all you need. Now, YouTubers, famous YouTubers, will tell you not that, that, that this advice is wrong. I know they will. Famous YouTubers like yourself. Don't go into the like and subscribe in that 20 seconds. For me personally, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think I think that you you're you're asking someone to subscribe before they've even seen your content. They don't I don't know if I'm gonna like it, so why would I subscribe? Well don't we do that in the podcast? However we ask people to if you've enjoyed it. Yeah, we do. We do. And the thinking behind that is is that you're planting that seed that you develop later on in the video. I'm with you. But that's my personal being. If they uh, they always say, don't they, if you want us to keep on making the content, then you need to like and subscribe so that we know that we're doing the right thing. When you're planning to do this, well, one of my top tips would be it would be audience participation, personally, because the more you can interact with your audience, the more they'll tell you whether they're enjoying what you're doing or not. And there's, there's nothing more heartbreaking than putting loads of effort into something and then watching those views and the views aren't great and you're like oh what did i do wrong and i can i can, I can attest to that because the first set of series i did some of the episodes are really quite high numbers and some aren't and and when i did them i was like well for example first episode went out and it was like wow you know i got a thousand views wow that's amazing next episode went out i got 200 okay next episode went out i got 50 yeah and i'm like oh I'm not doing. I'm not doing this well, and I and I possibly wasn't. In fairness, that it does affect what you're doing. So, uh, do I even want to do this anymore if people aren't watching? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, I I know YouTubers that are um are good friends of mine, and they're not in it for the money. They're in it to, because they want to spread their joy of a certain subject or or something like that, and they get so disheartened by it. And I just say to them, "Did you enjoy making it? Yes, I did. Did you enjoy making the model? Yes, I did." Did you like the, the video that you put together? Yes, I did. Well, then that's all you need. Yeah, unless you're going after a money-making idea, the viewers aren't the, the reason you're doing it. They're important, yes, but they're not the reason. That I know people that have put videos together got very low views, but it's an interesting video. And then it comes up on a social media, on a Facebook group or, or a, a live chat or whatever, and then suddenly those views explode. Because it's it's got uh, got a bit of traction somewhere, or it's been mentioned by somebody months or years later. Yeah, well, that's right. They sit there for they sit there forever. So what's really important is that you're going to enjoy what you're doing. Because if you don't enjoy it, it'll come across. Yeah, I feel like this is another chore that you have to do. It's gonna you're gonna know you're gonna see it. How long would you how long would you spend on on making a YouTube video and editing it? Mm. A day, two days, three days. Um, if it's a 15 minute video, the chances are I, I would have videoed 25 minutes in an hour, which I've edited down. Right. I might sit there for a whole evening making a video, but I wouldn't use anywhere close to that amount of footage. It would, it would be very nipped down because you don't, you don't need to see me nip off to the toilet or come back with a new cup of coffee or, you know, well, you know, you know about editing when you're talking about audio editing, you, you first your first tackle if you like of the thing is you you take out the dead air 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 take out that's the first thing you do <laughs> yeah that takes out an awful lot of content potentially yeah video wise it's a similar sort of process and unless of course uh, which i have also done where i've gone right okay today i am going to wire an engine let's say and i've got all my bits of wire all cut ready to go i've got all got my engine ready i've got the instructions ready i've got my super glue all sat there ready turn the camera on and go right we're going to wire this literally you, you film the process of you wiring the engine and then you turn it off and then that's your video yeah, that's a video of many other video series, you mean? Yeah, it, it really depends on what... I mean, a great way to start, um, get a kit out, put your camera on above. This kit is such and such. We're going to look at it, see what's inside, take the lid off, go through it. The only thing I would say about kit reviews, try and cut out rustling. Oh, <laughs> grates my bones, but... Yes. 
but that's just my personal opinion. Again, audio. Yeah. Don't be scared about graphics. So what I mean by that is your logo or, you know, that little five-second snippet that you're going to put at the beginning to show who you are and all that sort of stuff. You can make them really easily, and there's loads of loads of different stuff out there which you can walk through, which is free. And some of the stuff that's free, you can actually be really cheeky. Um, once you've got to a point you're happy with, uh, you click that trial button and make sure you've got a couple of days and sit there and just design everything you want, download it all, and say, no, I don't want it. And that's free then. A good place for that is Canva. It's got lots of uh, templates, lots of ideas for you to use. Uh, there's a lot in there that's for the pro, if you like, which is basically someone that pays for the package. It doesn't mean they're a pro. It just means they're paying for the package. But you can play around with those. I certainly had this last year. Really, really enjoyed making stuff up in there. You can actually put together little videos. So you can make you can make your credits for example, for the end and for the beginning. You can do all of that in Canva. Um, and it, it, and literally all you're doing then is just downloading a file. Yeah. And that's it. You've got it. It's done. I love Canva. Once you've des- designed, decided a format for you, who is you, your identity, you can then use that for Instagram posts, for Facebook posts, for all the media bits and pieces you want to do. You can design a, a, a template and then drop pictures in. And it's really, really simple, really intuitive and easy to use. And the great thing about that is the Instagram posts, the Facebook posts, the, if you've got a Facebook group and you want to do covers, uh, all that sort of stuff, it's all free. The only time it becomes costly is if you choose a template and use that template, because then there potentially is a, it's a part of the pro package. The basics of everything you need is in Canva free. It's there really really simple to use so yeah if anyone has any questions for you directly are you happy to answer them if anyone wants to know about anything about youtube and stuff yeah if i can answer them and if i can't answer them i will try my utmost best best to point you in the direction in which i know will give you some answers yeah. um and, and anyone that wants to venture in that's a bit scared about it all yeah drop me a line I'm, I'm more than happy to encourage you i've encouraged a few people and they're doing quite well so better than me I think that's what I would take away from it is just go and do it. Learn by doing. You know, you're not learn by just and watching YouTube videos. I mean, no, that's exactly what you've said. But <laughs> Don't allow it to become a monster. Mm, okay. Yeah. Awesome. So it just goes to show a simple setup is all you need to start making YouTube content. Everyone brings value to the hobby and what you have to say people want to hear. Enjoy your hobby and show the community in which you're part of. Making YouTube content is not something to underestimate. The time involved or the effort. But by taking a simple planned approach, it can become yet another extension of this wonderful hobby of ours. Next time on Just Making Conversation, we will be talking about other subjects relating to this daft hobby of ours. You've been listening to Just Making Conversation. Follow us on Facebook where we post photos, updates and other nonsense. Find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Google Podcasts and all the others. Let us know what you've been just making and what your thoughts are on this conversation in this episode. A big thank you to the following supporters from buymeacoffee.com forward slash JMC podcast. Joanne Franzini, Mike Beep. Sucker, Mike Shelley, Mark Harriet, Elliot, Colbretti, Adam, Kieran, Trust the Lagoon, Craig Nichols, Elliot, Robert Lane, Dean, Ivor Build Model Kit, Callum from Micro Machines Podcast, Paint All the Millies, Pete, Brad Warren, Tim, Black Rifle, John Julian, Chuck, Mark, Bakahawi, Simon the Jersey Den, Steve, Lee, Costa, Mark, Ray, Neil twice, Mike again, Robert, Andrew, Drew, John, Mike, Jeff, Richard, Lynn, Gordon, and seven others. If you do show support, leave your name so we can paint the roll of honour on the tail of the next episode it's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from him thanks for listening everyone